So this is the case of Claudia Elizabeth Lawrence. So let's just get started into a little bit about Claudia Lawrence. So she was born on February 27th, 1974 in Malton, North Yorkshire in England. Her disappearance date is listed as March 19th of 2009 at age 35. Heworth, York, is where she disappeared from in England. Now, as of today, it's been 14 years, four months, and 27 days since her disappearance. Her occupation at the time was a chef. So Claudia Elizabeth Lawrence was a 35-year-old chef from the United Kingdom who went missing on March 18th of 2009 in the city of York. Her disappearance sparked a nationwide search and has remained a high-profile and unsolved missing person case. Claudia was last seen on March 18th of 2009 when she finished her shift at the University of York's Goodrick College kitchen. She was captured on CCTV footage near the university at around 10.30 p.m. that day wearing a navy blue fleece jacket, dark colored trousers, and trainers. She had plans to meet a friend for a drink that evening but never showed up. When Claudia failed to show up for work the following day, concern grew. Her family reported her missing to the police, who launched a large-scale investigation to determine her whereabouts. Detectives began focusing on her phone records and discovered that her phone had received a text message late in the evening on the day of her disappearance, but the content of that message remained unknown. As the investigation progressed, details about Claudia's personal life started to emerge. It was revealed that she had previously been involved in relationships with several men, both in and outside of her workplace. In the months leading up to her disappearance, Claudia had been sending and receiving explicit text messages and had engaged in online dating. Now, the police conducted extensive searches of Claudia's home, workplace, and the surrounding area. They interviewed numerous individuals, including friends, colleagues, and former partners, but no significant breakthroughs occurred. The case gained widespread media attention and public appeals for information were made. Over the years, various leads and potential sightings of Claudia surfaced, but none led to her discovery. Several individuals were arrested and questioned in connection with her disappearance, but no one has been charged or formally linked to the case. Despite the lack of progress in the terms of finding Claudia, her family has continuously fought for justice and maintained a steadfast determination to find her. They have held numerous events, campaigns, and appeals to keep her case in the public eye, hoping that someone with crucial information will come forward. The Claudia Lawrence case remains open and the investigation is still ongoing. The police have offered a substantial reward of any information leading to the resolution of the case. It continues to be one of the most high profile missing person cases in the United Kingdom. And the search for Claudia Elizabeth Lawrence perseveres in the hopes of bringing closure to her family and her loved ones. So, Claudia spent her early life with her father, Peter, who died in 2021, mother, Joan, and older sister, Allie. Lawrence's father was a prosperous solicitor. Her mother was a member of the Malton Town Council and served a term as a mayor of the town. Now, Claudia enjoyed a comfortable childhood and was privately educated at the York College for Girls. She later attended a local catering college and qualified as a chef. She initially worked at several hotels and restaurants in York, but became tired of the unsocial hours this involved. Now, in 2026, she found employment at the University of York's Goodrick College, working as a chef in the canteen of the university's main campus. In 2007, Lawrence purchased a terrace cottage in the York suburb of Heworth, situated about three miles, five kilometers from her place of work. Lawrence was considered punctual and reliable by her employer. So Claudia remained single throughout her life while enjoying a gregarious social life. She was reported to have engaged in a series of short-term relationships often conducted on a concurrent basis. She was reported to have had a number of covert sexual relationships with men, some of whom were married or in relationships. Claudia was discreet about this and her family knew very little about her relationships with these men. 
this aspect of her lifestyle would later cause some media speculation and would also influence the police investigation of her disappearance. After moving to Heworth in 2007, Claudia would regularly spend evenings at the Nags Head pub that was close to her home. Claudia began relationships with several men whom she met while drinking in the pub, and her father admitted that the liaisons had created awkward situations with her lover's partners. Now, Claudia would also have has holidayed several times in Cyprus, where she was believed to have explored job opportunities. So let's look at the last known whereabouts of Claudia. So at 6 a.m. in the morning of Wednesday, March 18th, 2009, Claudia started her shift at Goodrick College Roger Kirk Center. She completed her shift at 2 p.m. and was recorded on CCTV, leaving the college on foot a few minutes later. At around 3 p.m., she was recorded on CCTV passing a shop near Melrose Gate near her home and was seen by a neighbor. During the course of the evening, Lauren spoke to both her father and mother on her mobile phone. Her mother described Lawrence's mood as normal and relaxed. The two women discussed celebrating the forthcoming Mother's Day. Lawrence told her mother that she was at home and that she planned to retire early since she would have to rise before 5 a.m. next day in order to walk to work. Her car was being under repair. She sent a final text message from her mobile phone at 8.23 p.m. and a final incoming text was received at 9.12 p.m. Thereafter, nobody is known to have seen or heard from Claudia. So, on Thursday, March 19th, Claudia was scheduled to start her morning shift at 6 a.m., but she did not report for her shift. Her manager called her mobile phone number, but although the phone rang, the call was directed to the voice messaging. The manager had taken no further action. Claudia had previously arranged to meet her friend Susie Cooper at the Nags Head that night. Now, Susie attended the appointment, but Claudia did not. Susie then attempted to call Claudia by telephone. Claudia was normally a prolific user of her mobile Samsung phone, so Susie was surprised when she was unable to attract a response. Susie attempted to contact Claudia again on the morning of March 20th, but again without success. At this point, Susie became alarmed and contacted mutual acquaintances, including George Foreman, landlord of the Nags Head, to obtain some information concerning her possible whereabouts. So Susie contacted Claudia's father, Peter, on March 20th to report the situation. Now, Peter telephoned his daughter's manager at the Goodrick College and was told that she had not reported for duty on either March 19th or March 20th. Peter then entered Claudia's home using his own key in company with George Foreman. The two men had found the house to be in an orderly state. The bed was made and there were unwashed dishes in the kitchen sink, suggesting she had eaten breakfast. Claudia's handbag containing her purse, bank cards and passport was in the house. The only significant items missing were her mobile phone, a set of hair straighteners and a rock sack which was normally used to carry her chef whites to and from work. Indications were that Claudia had left the house normally to go to work at around 5 a.m. on the morning of March 19th, but had never arrived. So the North Yorkshire Police, NYP, was contacted at around 2 p.m. on March 20th in order to report Claudia as a missing person. Police officers met with Claudia's father at her home later that day. NYP was initially slow to act on the grounds that Claudia was not a vulnerable person and that there was no obvious evidence of violence. They considered it likely that she had decided to absent herself and would reappear after a few days. However, NYP officers checked her route to work and sent out a public request for information. Claudia's family became increasingly insistent that she must have been abducted. After five weeks, NYP upgraded the inquiry from a missing person one to one of suspected homicide. So let's take a look at their original investigation. So the original NYP investigation of Claudia's disappearance considered various possibilities, including that Claudia had left with a new lover or to take up a new job or merely to take a break. In recent years, there have been an average at around 
3,500 missing persons reports per year in the NYP area. The large majority of these cases are quickly resolved when the missing person reappears. However, as time went on, Claudia's family became increasingly insistent that she would have contacted them had she been able to do so. This possibility was eventually dismissed. Second one, that Lawrence had suffered an accident or medical emergency on her way into work, that the route from her home to the place of work was checked at an early stage and no trace of her was found. This possibility was quickly dismissed. The third one was that Lawrence had been the victim of a chance encounter with an SK or another crazed individual. Reports were made of various people behaving strangely in the Heworth area in the days leading up to Claudia's disappearance. These reports were investigated, but without conclusive results. Case of known SKs who might have been active in the area were also considered, but discounted. The fourth one, that Lawrence had been a victim of a person known to her. Criminal profilers suspect Claudia knew her attacker and suspect her personal life holds a clue to her disappearance. Most homicide victims knew their killer. One piece of evidence was that Claudia's mobile phone remained on until 12.10 p.m. on March 19th, at which time it was deliberately switched off. It was determined that the phone had been connected to the mast in the Heworth area of York throughout the morning of March 19th and up until the point it was switched off. This indicates that the phone itself did not leave the local area. The only CCTV camera on Claudia's most direct route to work was the Melrose Gate post office, and the recording from the morning of March 19th did did not show Claudia passing, although that this is not critical since she might have passed out of camera view or used a parallel street. The independent crime fighting charity Crime Stoppers offered a reward of £10,000 to anyone providing information which would lead to the arrest and conviction of any person linked to the disappearance. NYP received over 1,200 calls offering information. An appeal for help was made by John Sintamu of the Archbishop of York. In early June of 2009, a reconstruction of Lawrence's last known movements was featured in an appeal on a BBC One's Crime Watch. Now, also in June, 100 days after his daughter went missing, Peter Lawrence launched a YouTube appeal for information. In late August of 2009, NYP and Claudia's family used the annual Whitby Regatta in North Yorkshire to publicize the campaign. In September of 2009, NYP revealed that the search for Claudia has been extended into Cyprus. Detective Superintendent Ray Galloway stated that Claudia knew several people who live on the island and that she may have received job offers while she was there. Galloway also stated that some people who have been interviewed had been reluctant and less candid when spoken to and that a team of officers had been sent to Cyprus to interview people whom Claudia had met there. It was reported that the last text message received by Claudia was from a man who was on the island. Later in September, detectives made a search of an area of the University of York campus. Now, in October, NYP revealed that they were looking for the driver of a rusty white van who was seen trying to talk to a woman on Claudia's route to work in the days before she disappeared. On March 24, 2010, NYP began searching areas of Heslington in York based on new information received in the last few days. On March 24, land near to a child's play area near a muddy farm track was searched, and on March 25, the search was relocated to a field near the university, an area of land which is bordered by a playing field and student accommodations. Now, nothing of significance was discovered. The search at Heslington was later considered to have been prompted by hoax information. So Galloway indicated that the probable explanation for Claudia's disappearance lay in her lifestyle, that principally it was in the complexity and mystery of her relationships with men, that the investigation centered around construction of a rogues gallery of men she had been involved with. Claudia had apparently lived a significant part of her life in secret. 
For a privately educated daughter of a country solicitor, Claudia had some unusual acquaintances, and this remains the only missing case where this gentleman was warned off or threatened not once but twice. The general finding which emerged from their original inquiry was that Claudia had probably been abducted or a homicide had been committed shortly after leaving her home on March 19th. It was considered likely that her killer was a local man that was known to her. So in June 2013, NYP announced that a 300,000 pound creation of a new major crime unit called MCU, set up to ease the burden on day-to-day -day policing. Based in Harrogate, the MCU was to be tasked from October 2013 to handle crimes including essay, kidnapping, and review cold cases. In July 2013, NYP said that the unit would assess several stalled cases when it opened in October, including Claudia Lawrence's disappearance. The MCU subsequently assessed the Lawrence case and carried out new forensic searches at her home in Heworth Road, using that were described as advanced techniques that were not available in 2009. The MCU found additional fingerprints and a man's DNA on a cigarette end in her car. Work surrounding her mobile phone showed from cell site activity that she had spent time in the Acombe area of York in the weeks leading up to her disappearance. On the fifth anniversary of her disappearance, a new appeal was made on Crime Watch, which aired on March 19, 2014. CCTV footage recovered in 2009 showed a silver Ford Focus hatchback car manufactured between 1998 and 2004 driving along Heworth Road. The car's brake lights come on as it approaches level with Claudia Lawrence's cottage. So the new investigation led Detective Day Malin to a number of arrests and on May 13th of 2014, a 59-year-old man was arrested by NYP on the suspicion of Claudia Lawrence's homicide. He lived close to her home, he had been a colleague of hers at the University of York, and the two were reported to have been on friendly terms and he had often given her lifts in his car to and from work. Searches were made of the suspect's house in York and his mother's house in North Shields, Tyneside. He was released on bail following day, then released from bail without charge in November of that year. And then in July of 2014, NYP had arrested Paul Harris, the landlord of the Acombe pub, since renamed the Clockhouse pub in York on suspicion of perverting the course of justice. Now Harris was quickly released without charge. He complained that the police had excavated a section of the cellar floor of his pub. Harris stated that Claudia had been a customer at his pub in the weeks before her disappearance and he had spoken to her but stated that was his only connection to her. Other arrests were made later but those concerned were all released and none were charged. Now, on March 8th of 2016, the Crown Prosecution Service refused to pursue a case submitted by NYP against four men who had been arrested on the suspicion of homicide, citing lack of evidence. The suspects had all been regular customer at the Nags Head. They all denied any involvement in Lawrence's disappearance. The NYP complained about the lack of cooperation from witnesses. The second investigation then ended having achieved little. So in August and September of 2021, police had engaged in Claudia Lawrence's case search Sand Hutton Gravel Pits, a wooded area around 8 miles 13 kilometers northeast of York City Center. Now, the search was reportedly prompted by new evidence, although police would not state what the new evidence was that the land had been used as fishing ponds since 1969. Police drained one of the lakes on site to allow a fingertip examination of the lake's bed. Ground penetrating radar equipment and cadaver dog were used in the search. At the end of the search, Detective Wayne Fox, Senior Investigating Officer of Claudia Lawrence's case stated that nothing significant had been found.
So Claudia Lawrence's disappearance had caused difficulty arising out of her family's inability to manage her assets and liabilities. Notably, they were unable to sell her house, on which the mortgage and other charges continued to accrue. Lawrence's father, Peter, a solicitor, campaigned for the law to be modified in order to allow for the appointment of guardians for the affairs of missing people. This campaigning eventually succeeded with the passing of the Guardianship Missing Persons Act of 2017, which was introduced to Parliament as a private member's bill. The bill, which came into force in July of 2019, allows the family of a missing person to apply to the court for guardianship of that person's estate 90 days after the disappearance. The new law became popularly known as Claudia's Law. Prayers go out to the family and, of course, Claudia Lawrence's um, mom, who's still alive, her dad, who passed away in 2021. But I really want to say a special thank you to Miss Dog Lover, who is from the United Kingdom and has been a huge supporter of this channel. I personally wanted to do something special, and I know Adam would agree as well, but I just wanted to do a video of something that had meaning to her. And of course, when you start reading about these cases, it's hard not to feel impacted and involved. So if anyone does have any information with regards to Claudia Lawrence's disappearance, for the supporters of the UK, can you please share this video around again? Keep Claudia Lawrence's case alive and keep it ongoing into the public. Somebody somewhere must know what happened to Claudia Lawrence. Thank you so much for watching this video and God bless.